Okay, today I'm going to talk about literally bugs. <laughs> uh, specifically, I'm going to talk about something that's known as the uh, intestinal microbiome. The intestinal microbiome are the resident organisms that live in the large intestine or the colon. And this is a huge, huge topic in medicine right now. I mean, in, in, for years, they thought that the, uh, you know, the colon was just an excretory organ and possibly some bacteria there could, could, could help synthesize certain vitamins like vitamin K and biotin. But nobody had any idea of the true power of the microbiome. Uh, it's, it's incredible what this stuff does. And to li really talk about everything that the microbiome does would probably take about a four-hour video which would really be taxing the attention span of a lot of the people that view this video, especially those with the you know with the with the ten second attention spans who who find the, uh, any video over four minutes to be torturous. So I'm not going to do that uh, personally. Uh, uh, honestly, really, if you have a problem with that attention span, you might as well tune this off right now because what I'm going to talk about requires explanation that no human on earth can explain in four minutes. Yeah, that's just idiotic. But anyway, getting back to the micro uh, microbiome, the microbiome it, it consists basically of all these various organisms that live in the large intestine, bacteria, fungi, uh, even a couple of viruses. Uh, and you know these cells. They used to say that the number of of uh, organisms residing in the in the uh, in te large intestine outnumbered human cells by ten to one. They were in the trillions. More recent research sh shows that they Think it. Uh, the number of uh, let's say uh, uh, organisms living in the colon, it actually outnumbers the number of cells in your body by three to one. So basically, there are more organisms living in your colon than you have cells in your body. And and they do a number of things, which I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some of them in this video. I can't obviously talk about everything related to the microbiome. It's a gigantic subject. It affects every aspect of health. But I will be covering this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Even that is too much to cover in one article, so I'll cover different aspects. But in this uh, video, I wanted to give a little overview, especially as in how it relates to bodybuilding and sports participation. Uh, I'm talking about the health of the microbiome. Uh, now, the, okay, there's, there's about, you know, when you talk about the microbiome, the microbiome actually refers to... Uh, the, the genome or the genetic characteristics of the resident organisms in the colon. Uh, the true uh, term would be microbiota, but because it's so often referred to as the microbiome for purposes of simplicity, I'm going to refer to the uh, resident uh, uh, organisms in the colon as the microbiome. And I'm also going to narrow it down to bacterial strains. And there's over 1,000 strains of bacteria that, that live in the large intestine, over a thousand. Uh, and and, they, and uh, if you were to weigh them on a scale, they'd weigh about two pounds. So two pounds of your body weight are, are actually intestinal bacteria. You know, there's a lot of people that say it's a waste of time to take supplements that are touted to affect the intestinal microbiome, such as, uh, you know, probiotics, because, <clears throat> you know, what these pro probiotics usually contain maybe a, a couple of billion units. And, you know, when you're dealing with the microbiome, you're talking about trillions. So a billion, they say, is just a drop in the bucket. But that's an oversimplification. It's not really true, which I'll explain later. I just wanted to get that out of the way. You know, of the bacteria that reside in the uh, intestine, or when I say intestine, I'm referring to the large intestine, not the small intestine. Of all the bacteria that reside in the intestine, there's two strains that dominate. One's called Firmicutes. <laughs> I know it sounds funny. And the other one's called Bacteriides. Bacteri now, depending on the ratio between these two strains, various aspects of health can be affected. For example, they, they now know that 99% of your immune response, get this, 99% is affected by a connection between your microbiome and the immune system. When you have an imbalance in the microbiome where Firmicutes dominates, you will have less of an immune response. This can affect processes, and, and, and you know, whether it's you know cancer protection or protection against viruses like influenza. If your microbiome is out of whack or, or in balance, 
and the term for that is called dysbiosis. That means an imbalance of bacteria where the bad bacteria in the colon are dominating over the good bacteria. And that can lower your immune response and make you sick. Recent studies show that uh, related to the microbiome, there's a couple of big controversy, and I've written about this in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. Uh, when you eat uh, the uh, you know the popular nutrients among bodybuilders, choline, which is often uh, used for fat loss, and there's another one called carnitine, used for the same purpose. You know, a lot of bodybuilders take supplements of choline and carnitine. Well, when you ingest these uh, supplements, they're converting the liver to a uh, sub uh, a substance called trimethyl oxide, trimethyl oxide or TMA, and uh, <clears throat> and um, when they get when this TMA gets into the intestine, certain bacteria in the uh, large co uh, intestine converted into a substance called TMAO. Now TMAO in several studies has been linked to diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now it's very controversial because not all studies show this and, and a recent study showed that the majority of TMAO produced by intestinal bacteria is just excreted out of your body. It really doesn't do much but there's a possibility that this TMAO could be dangerous. Nobody really knows right now. It's it's kind of up in the air, but I, it's it's not something I would worry about because if you take some of the substances that I'll mention later in the article, what I call pre well not what I call but what's, what's called prebiotics, you will you will change the ratio of intestinal bacteria to an extent that the production of TMAO is cut down to almost nothing. So it's not anything to worry about as long as you eat the foods that I mentioned. From the point of view, let's talk about from the point of view of bodybuilding and sports. Studies show that athletes actually have a good balance of intestinal bacteria, probably because to maximize performance, whether you're a bodybuilder or an athlete, you generally have to eat a pretty good diet. And you know, if you eat a good diet, you're going to have a better balance of intestinal bacteria. And there's thought to be interactions between exercise and microbiome in the sense that having an optimal balance, specifically bacterioides where it dominates over the firmicutes, tends to actually produce more energy. So if you have a better balance of, of intestinal bacteria, you'll actually be, have more energy and be able to train harder. Indeed, having a more diverse microbiome can affect how fast you lose body fat. That's another thing to consider. The, micro, the microbiome are involved in the body uptake of both fat and carbohydrate. Those who have dysbiosis or an imbalance of, of the intestinal bacteria, they tend to absorb more carbohydrate. And this excess carbohydrate, if you don't burn it off through exercise, it can, it's going to be converted into fat. Specifically, research has found, now we, oh, let's talk about a little about how the microbiome affects, or you know, let's say probiotics, which are forms of bacteria that kind of like nourish the uh, microbiome. How does it affect protein uptake? Well, research has found that the bacteria, that some some bacterial uh, uh, probiotics increase the body's uptake of the branch chain amino acid leucine by 23%, isoleucine, which is another branch chain amino acid, by 20%, and, and the third branch chain amino acid, valine, by 7%. The, uh, this, the, this intestinal bacteria supplement also increased glutamine uptake by 116%, ornithine by 100%, Tryptophan by one tryptophan by 100 percent and citrulline by 120 per 8 percent. Being able to absorb more of the amino acids from the protein you consume can help increase muscle growth in the long run. And if, you know, so so uh, what is the particular bacterial strain that did this? In case you're interested, it's called Bacillus coagulans BC3O. The, these are this particular strain of bacteria, which I think is available in some sub in uh, some probiotic supplements actually helps increase amino acid uptake. Uh, but the microbiome affects body composition in more direct ways. For example, having a higher pro uh, proportion, population I'm sorry, of gram-negative bacteria, they're called, in the intestine increases the permeability of the intestine. In other words, your, your intestine has the cells that are kind of what they call tight junction. The, the cells are, are very close together and it keeps the contents of the intestine in the intestine. If it were to leak out, you can have a lot of health problems, and that's what happens uh, with, with, uh, with if you have an imbalance of the bacteria in your intestine, where you have this uh, a increase in what they call grand negative bacteria. You can get like a leaky gut syndrome, where some of the uh, products produced by these grand negative bacteria, they're called endotoxins. 
they can actually escape into the blood. Now, uh, these toxic byproducts called endotoxins enter the blood. One in particular is called lipopolysaccharides, which is composed of both fat and sugar. It's, now, when it gets into the blood, it's detected by the immune system. And what happens then is that the immune system, through a certain mechanism, establishes what they call a system, low-grade systemic inflammation. The systemic inflammation then can cause insulin resistance. It increases the size of fat cells. And it also reduces the activity of the beta cells of the pancreas that produce insulin. If you add it all up, having an abundance of this gram-negative bacteria can definitely produce a condition that favors increased body fat, even if you don't eat a lot of excess calories. Now, the microbiome also aids, but it aids fat loss in another way. The bacteria, the, the good bacteria, tend to produce what they call short-chain fatty acids. Specifically, these short-chain fatty acids are acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid. Now, the, these, these have produced some marvelous health benefits. For example, propionic acid is a natural appetite suppressant that makes it easier to, to stay in a fat loss, diet, fat loss diet. The propionic acid produced by the, by the short-chain fatty acids, or I should say it's one of the short-chain fatty acids produced by the bacteria, it travels to your liver. And it, what it does is it, tur it turns off some mechanisms that tend to stimulate appetite. Now, butyric acid, which is another short-chain uh, uh, fatty acid, it's probably the most beneficial of all the short-chain fatty, fatty acids because it protects cells in the intestine from turning into cancer. It actually prevents colon cancer. It keeps your intestinal cells healthy. The butyrate also travels in the blood into the brain where it helps prevent the accumulation of proteins linked to the onset of degenerative brain disease, including Alzheimer's disease. This is a short-chain fatty acid produced by intestinal bacteria. You see what I'm so talking about when I say wide-ranging effects? Bodybuilders, unfortunately, are, are at high risk of having dysbiosis. Again, dysbiosis refers to an imbalance of intestinal bacteria where the bad bacteria tend to dominate over the good bacteria. Probably the worst, uh, the worst uh, habit of diets in this respect, unfortunately, is one of the best fat loss methods, which is ketogenic diets. Ketogenic diets, of course, are marked by either zero to up to 20 grams of carbohydrate a day. When you're taking in that little carbohydrate, you can't really eat. You just about have to eliminate fruits and vegetables and fiber. And it turns out that fruits and vegetables and fiber are the foods that nourish the good bacteria in the intestine. If you don't eat fruits and vegetables and, and the fiber they contain, you're going to get dysbiosis. And the studies have shown that uh, staying on a ketogenic diet markedly influences, in a bad way, the intestinal microbiome. Those it, it, it tends to veer the intestinal microbiome towards the bad bacteria situation. Um, so again, the more fiber you eat, the greater will be the diversity of the microbiome and the healthier you'll be. Studies that have shown that staying on a low-carb diet for extended times wreaks havoc on the microbiome, again, because of lack of dietary fiber on the diet. And if you also eat a high, highly processed diet that's rich in refined sugars and bad fats like trans fats, you're also going to be de detrimental to the microbiome. Recent studies show that eating saturated fat in large amounts is harmful to the intestinal bacteria. Again, this is a problem with the ketogenic diets because on the ketogenic diet, it features moderate protein intakes, very, very low carbohydrate intakes, but extremely high fat intake. And uh, a lot of the advice I see given for keto ketogenic diets advises people to eat large amounts of fat, including saturated fat. And they often say that saturated fat is harmless in that situation, but it's not really harmless because of its effect on the microbiome. It's very, very bad for the microbiome to eat a large amount of saturated fat. What are the good fats that help the microbiome? Two, omega-3 fats such as found in fatty fish, mackerel, herring, halibut. The omega-3 fat it nourishes the intestinal back microbiome. It's very good. Another good fat for the intestinal microbiome is monounsaturated fatty acids as found in macadamia nuts and extra virgin olive oil. Monounsaturated fats, excellent fat for the microbiome. Also harmful to the microbiome. You don't, you don't want to drink excessive amounts of alcohol. You, you make, want to make sure you get enough sleep because not getting enough sleep also causes harm to the microbiome. 
and you want to avoid excessive mental stress. I know it's hard to do in this day and age, but you you want to do, do what you can to avoid stress. And also be aware of the fact that when you use antibiotic drugs to treat any type of illness, the antibiotics tend to wipe out large amounts of the intestinal uh, microbiome. So what I would advise is you ha if you have to take antibiotics, make sure that you take some of the prebiotic and probiotic substances, which I'm going to mention in a minute. Uh, so, okay, well, let's talk about it now. Prebiotics and probiotics. Prebiotics are foods that contain elements that feed the microbiome. Uh, among these are a substance called inulin, which is found in various vegetables. Inulin contains a type of uh, it's a, substance, a substance called fructooligosaccharides. It's uh, also called FOS. FOS uh, feeds the beneficial bacteria intestine, and, and it leads to a rapid production of the healthy short-chain fatty acids. In other words, to put it simply, your, your good bacteria in your intestine absolutely love FOS. They love it. They love it. They will just grow like crazy on it. I mean, if you, you know, uh, you can get it in uh, flax, for example. Flax also, uh, flaxseed stuff, that also contains uh, elements that, that, uh, uh, that nourish the uh, microbiome. Some foods that are considered prebiotic include Jeruz Jerusalem artichoke, garlic, onions, and sauerkraut. Generally, any fermented food, like for example, kombucha tea, also is very nourishing to the microbiome. Yogurt, dark chocolate, unprocessed wheat bran, and green bananas. And now, the, the green bananas are what's called resistant starch because it's uh, harder to break down the carbohydrate in kind of unripe bananas or green bananas. But the, the intestinal microbiome can break it down and use it as a food source, and, and they love it. They love resistant starch that's found in green bananas. Very good. So your other option is also, and I would say to include this with the prebiotics, is the probiotics. Now, what are probiotics? There's simply various strains of bacteria that can be found in supplement form. There's dozens of them. Uh, these are thought to help re repopulate and manipulate the microbiome. Although how effective they are in doing this is a matter of speculation. As I say, some people say that because of the trillions of bacteria in your in your intestine, taking a couple of billion uh, uh, units of uh, of these uh, of these uh, you know these supplemental strains of bacteria is like putting a drop in a bucket. But uh, uh, the studies I've seen do do not agree with that because, and I'll get to that in a second. You'll see why I disagree with that. What it is what is known is that some of these supplemental bacteria supplements have been shown to promote fat loss and even to promote a greater production of testosterone. A rat study showed that when the rodents consumed a strain of bacteria called Lactobacillus, Lactobacillus reuteri, that's spelled R-E-U-T-E-R-I, they showed elevated testosterone levels. Indeed, a 2014 study showed that providing this strain of bacteria to rats maintained testosterone production in aging rats. Some scientists think it may even be able to do the same thing in humans. In other words, the implication being that if you included this particular strain of bacteria in your diet, and it is found in supplement form, if you started early enough, you actually might prevent the drop in testosterone that comes with age. It's speculation right now. It hasn't been proven except in animal studies, but it is kind of interesting because the same mechanisms that exist in the animals also exist in humans. So there's a possibility that this particular strain of bacteria might actually help preserve testosterone function. Function. Another strain of bacteria called Lactobacillus raminosis appears to protect rodents from the effects of stress by lowering cortisol levels and increasing the production of GABA, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain associated with stress reduction and calmness. Research from the Virginia Commonwealth University found that a gut bacteria called Clostridium cyandins manufactures male sex hormones, including testosterone. Uh, I have a funny feeling that this particular, it's called, again, Clostridium, S-C-I-N-D-E-N-S. This, don't be surprised if this shows up in supplement form. And I think I've already seen that there's a, one company selling it because it apparently causes uh, intestinal bacteria to manufacture testosterone, which is unbelievable when you think about it. Now, wh what do you look for when you're going to buy a probiotic supplement? You want to look for those that contain at least 10 strains of bacteria and at least a total of 10 billion units per capsule. 10 billion units. 
Now keep them in the refrigerator to prevent rapid breakdown because if you know if you keep the bacteria in a hot humid room, they're gonna break down rapidly and you're just gonna have you know an inert, inert supplement after a while. So keep it refrigerated just to be sure. Some of them you don't even need to be refrigerated, but I use a probiotic. I always keep it refrigerated just in case because it extends the life, let's say the uh, lifespan of the bacteria if you refrigerate them. Also, vari various nutrients such as the polyphenols found in green tea and fruits and vegetables also nourish the microbiome. In fact, the, the, it's like a reciprocal relationship because some of these polyphenols like resveratrol and some of the others that are touted for the health uh, protection effects, they're actually activated by the intestinal bacteria. If you don't have the right ratio of intestinal bacteria, meaning the good uh, a dominance of the good bacteria in your colon, some of these supplements are going to do nothing at all because they're not going to be activated. Uh, another uh, example is the cocoa flavanols, which are also activated by the intestinal microbiome. So again, there's a lot more to talk about with the intestinal microbiome, but if it would take hours, you know, I mean, uh, it's an exploding uh, subject in medicine today. Uh, it's, it, it's a huge health effect. But I'm going to end it here by just telling you that, you know, pay attention to your microbiome if you want to be healthy. You know, if you are on a ketogenic diet, you know, and you can't eat the fruits and vegetables and the fiber, at least take a uh, probiotic supplement, you know, to get you through because uh, that particular diet is, is just, it, can, it just wreaks havoc. You know, it's basically when you're on a low carb or ketogenic diet, you're basically starving. You're starving your microbiome because the microbiome exists only on fiber and, you know, those prebiotic foods. If you, if you eliminate them, it's just like you, you not eating any food. They die off. Okay, so that's it for the microbiome. If you want further information on, on uh, newer studies in the microbiome and also on nutrition in general, supplements, exercise, science, fat loss techniques that really work, anti-aging research, you uh, uh, all these subjects, uh, hormonal therapy, subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. The best source of information on these subjects anywhere, better than any blog or, or, or website, certainly better than any current magazine. Uh, the magazines today are terrible. The, uh, you know, the, the, the writer, most of the writers are not even being paid. And an old law of economics says you get what you pay for. So that's the magazines today. Don't even waste your time with them. They're garbage. Uh, <laughs> I know. I used to write for the magazines for 40 years. Trust me. The, the, the current magazines I wouldn't even use to line a birdcage. Uh, anyway, so that's it. Apply today to my, to my Applied uh, Metabolics newsletter. Uh, also, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have in your life, go to your local shelter. Adopt a dog. They're the greatest uh, they, they, uh, they're the best friends you ever have. Uh, <laughs> they'll never leave you. They'll never lie to you. They're the best. I mean, they're just so good. I, I just love them to death, seriously. So take care. I hope you got some benefit from this video. I know it's a little long, but hey, you know, it's a big subject. You know, and uh, guy, but, hey, you trolls, don't complain. Don't tell me that I could have done this video in four minutes because that makes you sound like a moron. Okay? Take care.